eight years, $50 million. That was the exact contract that the Toronto Maple Leafs handed coach Mike Babcock in 2015 to turn their franchise around. Four years later, he was fired after a loss to the Golden Knights and his reputation quickly went downhill. So how exactly did the most value coach in the NHL go from the league's best to the most hated man in hockey? Well, let's take a deeper look. For the longest time, Mike Babcock was considered the best coach in hockey. In 2003, which was his first year of coaching, he led the Anaheim Ducks to the Stanley Cup Final and then would later become the head coach of the Detroit Red Wings. He would win a Stanley Cup with them in 2008 and then lose in the final in 2009. In those years, Babcock set a record as the winningest coach in Red Wings history before eventually going to the Toronto Maple Leafs. With multiple World Cups and gold medals with Team Canada, Mike Babcock was the most valued coach in NHL hockey, and he was the guy who was finally going to bring a cup back to Toronto. Except, spoiler alert, he didn't, and in 2019, Babcock was fired by the Maple Leafs after a series of disappointing results. What followed was an avalanche of reports of how Babcock treated his players. Shortly after his departure, it emerged that Babcock had asked forward Mitch Marner, who at the time was a rookie, to rank the work ethic of his teammates. After Marner did what his coach asked, Babcock shared that list with the players who ended up at the bottom of Marner's list. That story was then followed by the Johan Franzen debacle from Babcock's days in Detroit. Former Red Wings defenseman Chris Chelios had revealed on an episode of Spin Chicklets that Babcock verbally assaulted Franzen during a playoff series against Nashville. Franzen reportedly confirmed this in a Swedish newspaper, saying that Babcock was, quote, the worst person he's ever met. Franzen would retire in 2015 because of post-concussion syndrome, but he actually gave praise to Babcock's attention to detail and his preparation as a coach. At the same time, he reiterated that he makes players feel very anxious as they are scared to death of making mistakes. Combine this with scratching legend Mike Medano before he could hit 1,500 career games and also Jason Spezza on opening night with his family in the crowd, Babcock quickly became one of the most hated coaches in hockey. Now, Babcock wasn't the only coach who was notorious for being hard on his players as over the years in NHL history, there has been some successful coaches who have had questionable methods to their coaching. But when Babcock got fired in 2019, this change represented a shift in how current NHL coaches are expected to coach. When Babcock first entered the league, this type of coaching style was probably more common than fans think. However, with the evolution of the league getting younger, the methods of motivating a team have drastically changed. There's a certain line that all coaches have between maintaining respect and losing the room entirely. In his final days as a coach in Toronto with a young team at the helm, it seemed like Babcock's style caused him to lose the room entirely. Babcock's methods may have worked in the early 2000s and his players may have hated him, but they would have no choice but to deal with it because ultimately his teams were successful. In today's NHL, the dynamics between coach and players have completely shifted. Players just don't respond to a drill sergeant anymore. They respond to a leader who can effectively communicate with all 23 guys in the room. That doesn't mean coaches can't be hard on their players either. It just means that they have to find a different way to get their message across effectively. Fast forward to present day and Mike Babcock is officially the head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets. A questionable move that surprised a lot of hockey fans this off season. However, coaches and people can change. And after spending his NHL hiatus coaching young players at the university hockey level, Babcock discussed how he's changed over that break. What I do know is when you have 23 different guys on your team, you need 23 different ways to approach it. You need a communication plan with each one. You need a development plan with each one. You need a mental health plan with each one to have success. I couldn't have said what I just said to you now 10 years ago because I didn't know that. But... When you go to a when you go to a university setting, they have all these experts in all these fields right there, right? and they help you get better. And you know, I had some good relationships with people there, and, and they teach you a lot about the way you communicate. Uh, and I think it's important to, that you continue to grow. Now, whether Mike Babcock is full of remains to be seen. 
He's said all the right things in terms of how you want to hear a coach adapt and grow, but now he's got to prove it. Tactically, Mike Babcock's teams have always been good, but what will be fascinating is if he can legitimately motivate a group of players to want to play for him. After all, you could be the best strategic coach in the game, but if you don't get your team to buy in and want to play for you, well, then it's all worth nothing. So what do you think of the Mike Babcock hiring? Do you believe he's changed his methods? How do you think he'll do in Columbus this season? Let me know in the comments down below. I personally was a bit shocked by this move, but if he's changed as a communicator, and that's a really big if, he can actually do some damage in Columbus with some of the weapons that they have on that team. I'll also leave a link to all the Babcock rumors and press conference in the bio down below so that you can form your own opinion on the situation. But as always, if you like this video and want to see more just like it, click on any of the links right here.